original, authentic, beautiful. Every Triumph motorcycle has to embody these three characteristics. So, when it set out to create its own affordable entry-level roadster with Bajaj Auto, did it transfer well onto that motorcycle? Well, you be the judge of that because you guys have literally broken the internet when it comes to the Triumph Speed 400. The British manufacturer's most affordable motorcycle in the retro roadster space. And it's breaking the internet for all the good reasons. Firstly, because it's coming in at a supremely attractive price point of Rs 2.33 lakh. And if you're one of the lucky 10,000 customers, the first ones, well, you can get an additional 10,000 rupees off. But there is a lot more to the bike than just its attractive price point. And the rivals better be scared, except for two. Which one? Stick around to find that out. Now, as the name suggests, the Speed 400 is a speedy motorcycle. Not quite KTM 390 Duke-like speedy, but definitely it is a quick motorcycle. It is certainly going to be one of the quickest or if not the quickest retro roadster in its segment and will also give certain 650cc roadsters a good run for their money. Having said that, this motor chugs along beautifully because you have a healthy spread of torque right from 2,500-3,000 RPM all the way to 9,000-9,500 RPM. And that makes it quite a thrilling motor, especially if you like things sporty. This motor can effortlessly cruise at 110-120 kmph with minimal vibes present. Yes, it is a big, lumpy, single-cylinder motor, so you will have certain vibrations, especially these are found at the bars or, and the pegs. But they don't get anywhere near to being bothersome like you experienced on the old Apache RR310 or the old KTM 390 Duke. None of those are experienced over here. Having said that, when you come into the urban jungle, if you want to ride it slowly and effortlessly, yes, the motor is certainly tractable. At uh, speeds of 50 kmph, you can ride it in sixth gear, but anything lower than that, you will have to downshift. So in fourth gear, you can keep it at 30 kmph and you can ride it effortlessly. But if you want to shift into the higher gears, you have to pick up the pace. In that sense, even the gearbox is quite slick. Now, a few test units were facing a bit of notchiness in the gear shifts, but it is a Bajaj built product. So let's give them a benefit of the doubt. And hopefully these small, small issues get sorted out by the time you get to experience this motorcycle. The clutch action on this bike is also pretty light and very, very responsive. So you can pop wheelies. I did one by mistake and uh, it was quite a thrilling moment at that point in time. And this motor, I am quite eager to try it out in different formats, especially when it comes to the scrambler and perhaps even a cafe racer format. Now, claim fuel efficiency figures for this bike are 29 kilometers to the liter. Bajaj claims that this is achievable with a healthy dosage of city and highway riding. And the elephant in the room remains that whether or not this is a redesigned Dominar engine. Well, the answer to that is no. Instead of starting out with a clean slate, Bajaj and Triumph engineers, well, they've used the same bore dimension. Only that one thing to start off building this motor. And everything except for that is virtually different. So you don't have anything in common with the Dominar engine and it shows. This looks quite exquisite and it only has one spark plug. Now this thrilling motor would not have counted for nothing if not backed up with good hardware. And to their credit, the chassis on this motorcycle is sublime as it allows you to push it into the corners pretty hard and it stays stable all throughout. Now we rode it at the Bajaj test track. Sadly, we don't have quite footage for it, but over there, this bike felt sharp, agile, and even out in the wet, this bike didn't get flustered as much. And 
credit must be given to the suspension because they damped any sort of undulations, any sort of mid corner bumps quite well. And it allows you to push the bike hard into the bends. And it's sharp, agile, but not quite KTM 390 Duke level sharp. In the retro roadster terms, this is certainly living up to that speed twin legacy. The speed twin 1200 vibe that you get is present on this motorcycle. Lastly, these tires. Now we've got the Apollo Alpha H1s on this motorcycle and Bajaj is offering it in two options, Apollos as well as MRF steel brace. Both of them are W rated, both of them are made for India and both of them are good enough to handle our conditions. Despite having sporty intentions, the ride on the Speed 400 isn't firm or jarring. Rather, it's quite plush because we spent nearly an hour riding this motorcycle over a variety of riding terrain and you've gone over pumps, undulations, potholes, especially the new ones that have erupted in this monsoon season. And going over them all, this bike does a fantastic job of soaking up those bumps. Yes, it has become rather dirty, but I've had quite fun bringing it to this location and it didn't throw quite a fuss when we were getting it here. So, the suspension tuning is done perfectly to suit our Indian roads. The brakes lack a bit of poke. Given its retro intentions, the bite is adequate. However, this bike offers naked street factor level of performance. And considering that, a fiercer approach would have been appreciated, especially by those who will be riding it in a sporty manner. 790mm seat height, spacious, roomy rider section, wide bars, neutral set foot pegs. All in all, this Speed 400 gives me a lot of Speed Twin 1200 vibes. And the inferences here are very evident. So if you want to ride this bike, comfortably in a chilled manner in the city or out on the highway, you can do that very nicely. If you want to go sporty riding, good attack posture. And if you are worried that whether or not these bar and mirrors, besides looking beautiful, they are actually of use, well, they are because these are nice and wide and round. So there are no blind spots to worry about. A denser seat foam for better back support would have helped in keeping your spirits high during long stints. Currently, it does get a little taxing if you ride it for over an hour and a half. Plus, you should definitely consider getting the lovely rubberized tank grips that are part of the accessories catalog, as they will provide you with a better sense of control and connection with the motorcycle. Now, like I've been saying since the initial unveil of the photos of this bike, I am not a fan of this console. Yes, I like semi-digital consoles, but the issue is that the analog portion is a speedo and the taco is barely readable once you're out on the booth. So if it was swapped around, if the this huge space was used better for the speedometer, it would have been a nicer setup. Still, it's fine. Now, if you're wondering why Triumph didn't offer turn-by-turn -turn navigation or smartphone connectivity or music controls or whatnot, they are of the belief that the best navigation system is there right on your phone. So, since you're buying this motorcycle at an attractive price point, better use a little bit more money and buy a good mobile mount and enjoy the navigation on your phone. Instead of smartphone connectivity features, Triumph is offering better safety features traction control works neatly in a barely noticeable manner. You can switch off the aid, but it is not a convenient method. You have to toggle the I button until the traction control mode is displayed, then press the same button for precisely 5 seconds and only then will it get deactivated. Thankfully, it remembers to stay off or on even when you turn off the ignition key. Plus, keeping up with the times, the bike gets a neat USB-C port to charge your devices on the go. The port is neatly placed without you having to worry about the cable breaking apart. Lastly, the Speed 400's level of attention to detail and exquisite finish levels are pretty much unlike any other motorcycle in the sub 3 lakh rupees space. You would have to spend nearly double or triple to find similar levels of fit, finish and detailing.
The Triumph Bajaj Association is off to a great start and the Speed 400 has made a stellar impact. It's leaving quite a lasting impression, one that I am not ready to part with just as yet. And if you're wondering whether or not you should buy this bike right now, well, remember that the KTM 390 Duke was attractively priced at the start and the prices since then have just gotten higher and higher and higher and the next gen Duke is going to be again quite seriously priced. So if you're wondering when to get this bike, get it now because right now it costs 2.23 lakh and after the 10,000 bikes, it's going to cost 2.33 lakhs and who knows how high these will go. And if you're wondering whether or not you should get it, ask yourself this question or these two questions. Are you a Royal Enfield Classic 350 enthusiast or are you a KTM 390 Duke enthusiast? If the answer to either of these two questions is yes, then well, this bike, you won't like it quite as much. But if you are considering a sub 400cc motorcycles and the answer to those two questions are no, then this bike should definitely be on your radar and I'm sure that this will find its space in your garage. So do let me know what you think about our review in the comment section below. Do drop a like on this video, share it with your friends who are seriously considering a purchase in the sub 400cc space and you should definitely hit the bell notification icon because you don't want to miss the next time the Speed 400 appears right here on Zigweeds.